Hi everyone, this is Tim at Makers Machining. We're talking a little bit about power transmission a little bit this morning. Uh, we've got some pulleys that we're machining the teeth on here. You can see we're starting out a blank that's already turned uh, and a bunch of tap holes are put in there. We're going to add the, the teeth on here for a timing belt. The timing belt is a rubber belt and it's got teeth in there that uh, is quieter than a chain and sprocket you know, with the rubber belt, but it does the same purpose. If you've got a, this is a 50 tooth uh, timing gear here, you might have a smaller one that's 20 tooth or you might have a bigger one. Uh, it's just like setting up the ratio of, of the sprockets like you have on a bicycle, but this is going for machinery and uh, you'll see a lot of these timing belts and uh, different things in industry and in uh, machinery today. Uh, so anyhow, we're, we're at the point where we're cutting the teeth on these. Uh, this particular uh, pulley here is a half-inch HT timing belt. It's got 50 teeth on it. Uh, half-inch HT means that uh, there's a half-inch between each tooth. We'll show you that in a second on a CAD drawing. So with 50 teeth at a half-inch apart, uh, if you measure all the way around, the circumference of this uh, pulley is 25 inches. So when you're when you're figuring out what size pulley you've got to have, uh, the blank has to be. Uh, you take that figure and you take 50 divided by pi. I'm sorry, 25 divided by pi. I got the wrong number. It should be 25 there. 25 divided by pi will give you the OD of this uh, pulley. It's 7.96 OD. So that'll give you your your point of the, the blank. If you have uh, a different size pulley or different number of teeth, they all have to add up to where the, the diameter adds up to however many teeth you got. You can't, you can't uh, chisel on the number of teeth because the, the pulley and the belt have to match up. Uh, it happens to be that uh, these are uh, 3.6 degrees apart. So we talked uh, last time about dividing heads and uh, how you can accurately index on, on computerized machines, you can tell it that, okay, I want uh, this diameter cut, and I'm going to put uh, 50 teeth on it. It'll figure out how far apart they are. And this happens to be 3.6 degrees. It's kind of an, an easy one to figure out because you got 360 degrees in a circle. you got 50 teeth. They're a half inch apart, so the ratio there is 3.6 degrees per, per tooth. We have to put these up in uh, the lathe. The holes are already put in uh, there around the outside, but we've got a small pattern here that we have to position in relation to the tap holes that are already in there before we can uh, start cutting our teeth on the outside. Uh, what we've done here, uh, I don't know if you can see it real well, but we started out with a ball end mill to get in there and rough out a good portion of the material and then we made a cutter that goes in and cuts the final shape and condition of the tooth. So we're getting a nice blend. There's a radius in there. There's no sharp corners. You don't want to tear the rubber belt or anything. So we've got a nice, uh, a nice transition from the OD down all the way through that tooth pattern. So that, that belt right smooth in there. Anyhow, uh, back to this. And again, I apologize. That should have been a 25 in there. 25 divided by pi. 7.96 OD on the on the port. So we'll kind of walk over here by the control of the machine and look at some of the, the uh, CAD drawings on the machine and then we'll cut some of the last couple teeth there. We've got one that we've got to reference out. Joe's going to uh, zoom in on a couple points here to show you the distance between the teeth, how we have to uh, show that on there. It's a half inch between the high point on the left to the high point of the next two on the left. So that's a half inch pitch on there. That's what we're using in our, our program. And if you want to see what the what the uh, tooth looks like, or the each tooth looks like, it's that view right there. And we use that to grind our cutter to make the, the nice shape. So we go in with the ball end mill first. I don't know if you've got a picture of the ball end mill touching in the there we are up there. So the ball end milk will go in and cut all that material out and then back to our other finish shape will give us the, uh, uh, there's, there's the end mill on top of the outside of the part so you can see that it, it tangents out there nicely so there's not a sharp uh, sharp edge on there. So Joe if you want to 
fire this thing up. We've got one more, uh, one or two more feet to cut. making 10 thousandths deep cuts. The tooth is uh, about 175 thousandths deep. There's that ball end mill going to slow-mo. Now we're going to index down and get the, uh, the finishing cutter and it's going to go all the way around the whole part. Index that around. about 175,000 feet. The ball end mill goes in and makes a bunch of passes, 10,000 feet per pass, and then we've got several passes to finish it up. It's got a slower speed, uh, high RPM, and it gives you a nice finish. You might recall uh, sometime back we did a, a brass part that had a spline cut on it in a different machine, and uh, that indexed around six times, uh, and, and we fit that into a, a mating part. So. Uh, these are all done in live tooling lathes, but I still owe you a video on uh, how to cut a spline if you don't have live tool lathes to do this. So anyhow, that's uh, that will be done here in a little while, but uh, we got her going and we got a few more to do, so we'll be all set and get these things wrapped up. But I thought this would be just an interesting one to show how timing belt pulleys are made and uh, talk a little bit about how they're how they're used so anyhow thanks for joining us today we'll talk to you again soon so long